It's something most of us don't even think about, whether sidewalks and bus stops are accessible for everyone. But when you see it for yourself, it's hard to deny it's downright dangerous. Kelly Wiley live on Wrightsboro Road investigating invisible barriers. Laura Richard, we went looking for answers after a veteran and an advocate for disabled people told us that this voting location, some people didn't vote at because they couldn't get to it. Well, we, for over a month, have been digging into this, figuring out who's responsible for making sure people can get in and around the city, and if they have. Ashley Jackson is a full-time student, just months away from graduating Augusta University, this time with a master's degree. Facebook shows her triumphs, but also some of her struggles, some every student faces, other struggles most of us don't. There's always been some sort of challenge somewhere. In Augusta. Honestly, it's probably the worst place I've been to. Bad, Jesus. Anybody ever stop, help you? When it's raining, some people will stop. The school shuttle drops her off on the top of a hill at Christenberry Fieldhouse. How are you? I'm good, how are you? A special curb to curb transportation service she uses during the daytime doesn't run past 7 o'clock. This is how she gets home from her night classes. Yeah, the cop stopped me and asked me what I was doing one day. And then what did you say? I told him I was going home. And he was like, okay. Because, I mean, at some point, I think people realize, like, I don't have another option. There's only one sidewalk, and it's on the opposite side of the road from her apartment. So, yes, she rides in the shoulder of the road. So there is a bus stop on this side of the road, but there's no way for her to get on it. There's no curb cut, and it's filled with grass. I can't get over there. That's what I was talking about. Like, there's some I just can't, can't get to. We started asking the city questions about this intersection and its accessibility for people in wheelchairs last month after the May election. An advocate for disabled people and veterans contacted News 12 about this very spot where some of you, your family, and friends in wheelchairs and with other disabilities exercise their most basic right to vote. By law, polling places must have an accessible route to get to the entrance of the voting facility. Carol Burrow Bridge works for Augusta Richmond County as the ADA officer. That job is to enforce and audit for ADA compliance. We asked what the county was doing about this road. Even if that were a public street, the shoulder of the road is the accessible path. So okay. most likely nothing will be done there. Uh -huh. that's right. I mean, as far I as concrete, as far as putting in a sidewalk, no, we're, we will not be putting in a sidewalk or asking Chris and Barry to put, or uh, Augusta University put in a sidewalk. And here's why. DOJ basically says, uh, the legal guidance says that if there isn't a sidewalk, that the accessible path is the shoulder of the road. It's not a good answer. Ashley agrees. But to me, that makes no sense because it's still a safety issue. News 12's I-Team found out the county finished inspecting all of its polling places for accessibility a month before the May elections. The words you see in red are the fixes the county made. And the rest, missing curb cuts, van signs, and access aisles, that doesn't appear to have made it off these pages. Never. Not one word. The ADA officer confirms other locations weren't told of the audit or improvements that needed to be made. Did you get in contact with all the people who run these facilities on a normal basis to give these recommendations, non-consequential or, or not? No, not at all. The scope of my job is is not to go out into the, the community and, and um, basically um, enforce or or educate the public on the ADA. But under a plan the county drafted two years ago and adopted earlier this year, enforcement and developing policies that require and support compliance with ADA and related regulations does fall under the ADA office. And this. Right, right. But these are accessible and that is the requirement. And a tough reality for Ashley and others. If I don't have the curb cuts, if I don't have the ramps, if I don't have sidewalks in most instances, sometimes I do have no choice but to do without those because they don't exist. I can't do it. If I'm with friends, I have a little bit more accessibility because I have assistance. But a lot of the time, I'm not. I try to be as independent as I possibly can.
Well, since we started looking into this, the Board of Elections director has reached out to us and told us that they're planning a, a meeting between city leaders and advocates in the community to discuss concerns with polling locations. It's not on the books yet. They're planning on doing it sometime in August. But Richard, Laura, the next election, the runoff, is set for July. I mean, I hold my breath when I watch that video of you two walking out there, a curb cut at the very least. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was definitely scary even for me, and I'm able to kind of get out of Dodge and get out of the way for a photographer. It was scary. Um, she was actually nonchalant about it because she's done it so many times, right. and she told us she's just exhausted, really, with fighting it at this so point. They're doing it day after day, and they're invisible to the rest of us. Kelly, thank you for making them visible to a lot of people today. We appreciate your investigative report. Richard, Laura, Broad Street is one of those areas in Richmond County that folks in wheelchairs and with disabilities have a really hard time getting around on. Take, for instance, some of the cracks in this sidewalk. They seem so small, but for someone in a wheelchair, it can really be an obstacle. Another blatant look at this. Look at this hardened cement. This is a curb cut. So someone getting on here, this sidewalk in a wheelchair would have a really hard time getting over that. So we found that Broad Street actually has a timeline to get fixed, although it could take years. But we also found the roadway that's at the center of our investigation doesn't even have that. Anybody ever stop? Help you? Um, when it's raining, some people will stop. Um, some people will. I've, there have been people that will stop and ask me what I'm doing. That hasn't happened in a while. We first introduced you to Ashley on the side of Wrightsboro Road showing us how she got from her classes at Augusta University to her apartment. After we showed you the video, Augusta University made sure a shuttle picks her up and drops her off in front of her apartment. But I appreciate the fact that they did that because as far as I was concerned, it wasn't for the school to fix it. It was more of a city accessibility issue in my mind. And Richmond County's Board of Elections vowed to make better access to a polling site here a top priority. County engineers know it's a problem, but so is the money to fix it. Assistant Engineering Director John Ussery says there's no fix in sight or on the books for the bigger problem, the lack of sidewalk on one side of Wrightsboro Road. Is it even in the cards for there to be a sidewalk added on Riceboro Road? Currently there is no um, project that's been programmed to improve Riceboro, that portion of Riceboro Road. It doesn't mean we're not aware of it, but it's not part of the TIA program. It's not part of another, you know, any other program that we have. The TIA projects he mentions, he tells me it will be at most three years before construction starts on those. And at the end of that process, Broad Street, another area with cracked sidewalks, will get a fix. We will do what we can to make small improvements until we get to the point where we can program a large project. But Ussery says the $1 million allocated in tax money that they've been using to fix the smaller issues this year has run out. I think the commission is is aware of this issue and you know like I said I, I do applaud them for for trying to start the process and and giving us some money so we can so we can start to do these improvements um, we probably will ask for for additional funding above what we got last time but and so that'll be up to them to determine what their priorities are after nine years of calling a day ahead for a ride and traveling risky routes Ashley says she stopped looking for changes. You get to the point where you're so frustrated that you don't look for it anymore. And the county did get grants to work on a portion of Walton Way and Kissing Bower Road, so work could start fairly soon on those projects. We also learned that the engineering department is working with the transportation department to fix accessibility to some bus shelters that you see all around the county. And that's because the transportation department has a different pot of money that they can work from. And those changes we might see more so in the near future. Well, Laura, that's right. Let's shrink it down just a little bit. The county says if they fix the top 95 issues with the county, it could cost them more than $20 million. So come this way. We set out to find the top five 
worst areas as far as people getting around in wheelchairs, people getting around if they have physical disabilities, starting with where I am right now on Green Street. Dwayne Murray has lived in Augusta for most of his life. He spent the last nine years walking in different shoes. I had an aneurysm. He lost feeling on his left side, has no use of his left arm, and even after physical therapy. It's kind of hard, you know, being disabled now versus before. Things like walking to the grocery store on Wrightsboro Road aren't so easy. They don't have a lot of sidewalks for us to, you know, get around on. Not on Wrightsboro Road anyway. Let's back up a bit. Back in 2014, the city of Augusta started working on this plan to fix the bad sidewalks, ramps, and other infrastructure, making it hard for people like Dwayne to get around. They completed the project in 2016, but two years passed before commission actually voted and approved the plan. In that plan is a list ranking the places that need to get fixed first. Number one is Green Street from 13th all the way to East Boundary. You can see they've already started work on the ramps. Second on the list is Richmond Avenue in Somerville. There's no curb cut here or at any of the four corners at this intersection. There's a school along this roadway and this is where people go to vote. Bridgeford and Boy Scout Road near Tut Middle School takes number three. Priority number four is Ellis Street from 5th to East Boundary. Take a look. You can see in some areas they fix some of the ramps. And rounding out the top five is this area that includes 4th and Walton Way, you can see is right near the sheriff's office and come this way, you can see areas of the sidewalk are not in good condition. The list has 95 areas in Richmond County. Mitchell Murchison, the engineer who helped come up with it, says they tried to give the city a road map. So, you know, wanted to try to give them the priorities so they so they had somewhere to start. Way down at study area 72 and priority number 45 on this list is this section of Wrightsboro Road at the center of our investigation. Here, there's only one sidewalk on one side of this very busy road. Remember, these are the top five that need to get a fix. We found four of the five priority areas aren't even funded yet. Only the Green Street Project. And that's where it all comes back to. Without, you know, without the financial backing, you can't get any of it done. Dwayne is wondering, as far down as his block is on this list, when the work here will get started. Laura Richards, senior citizens and people with disabilities live in the apartments right behind me. Three hospitals are right over here to my left. But folks say the sidewalks around these areas are not cutting it. Small things like not being able to get off the sidewalk with your wheelchair or not having sidewalks where you can. The city of Augusta, they know about these issues. One veteran is showing us firsthand. Risk is not an unfamiliar concept to Douglas Holland. Yeah, I've had my neck broke twice. He's retired. I was a paratrooper. A veteran of the 101st Airborne Division Screaming Eagles. He's fighting a different battle now. Now I'm going to have to take the street. He's telling you you can go. Again. Okay. And you can't take this? Despite the challenges. If I came down here and hit that grass strip, I would be stuck. If the chair would just sink. He has to keep rolling along. And now we had a ramp getting up on here on this sidewalk, but there's no ramp getting back off or no ramp getting back up to the other sidewalk. And the bus stop sits right there. We can't, we, we don't have access to the bus stops. Douglas, who lives in Augusta's medical district, says even when he tries to avoid riding on the sidewalks, taking the bus, he hits a roadblock. The bus stop will put the ramp down, we get off the bus, and then we can't get off the sidewalk. We found the city put out a bid last year to fix more than 200 bus shelters around the city that some can't quite get to, but they canceled it and the project was never completed. Since our investigations, the city is reviving the project, partly. The city is using $46,000 in federal transit grants to refurbish the bus shelters we showed you in our first investigation. So there is a bus stop on this side of the road, but there's no way for her to get on it. There's no curb cut. The one in front of the municipal building and to put new shelters along North Lake Road. It's such a nightmare for people in chairs to get around. It's not even funny. For right now, the fixes don't include the streets around Douglas Holland's home in the medical district. We just call them sidewalks to nowhere because that's where it leads us. His sidewalk to nowhere. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. 
is nowhere near where it needs to be. And engineers say it would cost the city more than $150,000 to fix just this stretch of road down to St. Sebastian. It's actually a pretty low priority in their transition plan compared to other areas. We know that the engineers requested or said there should be at least three new ramps added and a stretch of area where they think a sidewalk should be put in. Oh, it doesn't seem that complicated, no. but it's so expensive, right? Well, yeah, and it's just something if you need it, you really need it. Kelly, thanks for showing us some of that, especially firsthand, mm -hmm. you know?